Hello and good day. So today we're going to learn about the anatomy of the nervous system. So we're going to focus on three learning outcomes. First, we're going to look at um, the basic organization of the nervous system, which comprise of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Secondly, we're going to look at some of the terminology that defines the orientation of the brain as the central nervous system in order to identify the structure and anatomy of the brain. And finally, we're going to focus on four lobes of the brain and understanding its location and function, and also some clinical implication. So I will start first with the organization of the nervous system. So as we can see from this model, okay, the nervous system in our body comprises of two parts, right? First is the central nervous system, which is the brain itself, okay, the one that we can see here, the one that you can see here, the one that you can see here. So all of these are part of the nervous system. And plus, what you cannot see from here is what's going all the way down our spinal cord. Okay, so brain plus spinal cord is what comprise the central nervous system. Okay, and of course, we have nerves that come out of the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, and they are outside the central nervous system. So these are called the peripheral nervous system. Okay, how it works? The peripheral nervous systems act as the afferent, okay, or the source of input into the body or into the central nervous system. And they will also carry out the efferent, okay, or the output uh, from the central nervous system. One example, if you just touch a hot plate, okay, you will feel the heat. And what's, going to, what's happening is that the inputs are being carried by the peripheral nervous system into the central nervous system where it integrates the process and carry out the information back from the motor cortex so that we can remove it as an efferent. So both peripheral and central nervous system work hand in hand to give you a response and function. So now we will move on to uh, learning the basic neuroanatomical terminology so that you can orientate the brain structure. Okay, first of all, looking at this model, you need to be able to understand which is the, which is the front part first, all right, in order to correctly identify the brain. So the easiest way to do this is by holding your own fist, okay, and you can see that your fingers is folded this way and all of the other four fingers are in this direction. So this is the frontal part. So similarly, if you look at this model, the part that forms the fist is pointing towards this direction, right? So we can be confident that this is the frontal part or the uh, anterior part of the brain. Of course, if, if this is the anterior part of the brain, this will be the back part, okay, or the posterior part of the brain. This is the superior. And finally, okay, this is the inferior part of the brain. Anterior, equivalence to rostral. Posterior, equivalence to caudal. Superior, equivalence to dorsal and inferior equivalence to ventral. Okay, so these are the terminologies to orientate the brain uh, itself. This is upside down. So to orientate it, you need to put it in anatomical position like this. Okay, and checking on the face, you know that this is pointing forward or anterior. And I can split the brain into half because there is a midline sagittal. Okay, that's what it looks like if it's cut into half. You can also cut the brain okay, in different planes. And these planes, okay, we can call it differently as well. So if you cut the brain in such a way that it's showing the structures okay, on the horizontal planes, like this model here, okay, this is horizontal plane. On the other hand, if you remove or you cut the brain from this angle, this time around, instead of cutting it this way, you're cutting it this way, okay? This is called the coronal, coronal plane. So you have the sagittal just now. Anything that you go on this line, sagittal. Anything that you go on this line is horizontal. And anything that you go on this side is coronal. Now we're gonna look at the main parts of the brain. All of these uh, wide areas are what we call the cerebrum. So the cerebrum is what consists of um, neurons and also cell bodies. We can see that the cerebrum okay, has a lot of wrinkles, 
okay, or what we call as gyrus, okay, of a plural gyri. And also in between the gyrus are the foldings, and these foldings are called sulcus. Okay, or for plural sulci. If I turn it around, you can see that there are two smaller structures of the brain. For this model, it appears in a darker color. Okay, and these are the cerebellum, right? So the cerebellum are more concerned with um, memories that are related to procedural or skills as well as for balance. Okay, and other functions as well. And if you notice, there are a smaller structure here. These are the brain stem. They may appear small, but they are very important because they control a lot of functions such as consciousness and breathing, okay, focus. So this is very important. If you damage this uh, structure, you might stay in comatose um, state for a long time. Now we have come to um, the objective where we want to look at the four lobes of the brain and its function. There are four lobes of the brain and you can see that the major lobes are situated at the front part and it is divided from the second part, which is a parietal lobe, from this major sulcus here called the central sulcus. So the central sulcus, it varies in individuals, but usually is the most prominent sulcus that we can find, which split the brain, okay, between the frontal lobe. So this is the frontal lobe, this is the parietal lobe, okay? And also quite significantly, the red gyrus here, which is right in front of our central sulcus, is what Okay, carries or house our neurons that responds to the motor innervation. Okay, so this is the motor cortex. Okay, and this is um, the sensory one. Okay, the somatosensory cortex. So all of the information about sensory will come and arrive at the brain region here. Okay, and whereas all the responses okay, that will move your muscles are coming from the motor cortex, from the front part of the central sulcus. The rest of the frontal cortex can be found here and they are involved in various other functions, including high executive function, reasoning, behavior, um, also memory, particularly short-term and or working memory. Okay, so they are very important brain function as well as motor function. So you can imagine if someone are involved in traumatic or accident or there's some blockage of the blood vessels, then obviously some of this function will be impaired. Okay, we can see that the next um, region or the next loop is the parietal loop and it is divided from the, the next or the third loop, the occipital loop, by a, a sulcus called the parietal occipital loop. Okay, so this loop will be separated and is situated here, and this is concerning mostly the somatosensory. So all the senses will be picked up and will be uh, detected in the brain here. So any damage to this structure of the brain will cause you to have loss of sensation. And occipital lobe, okay, the part that is the remaining part here at the back is to do with the visual, okay. So any damage of this area will have implication on our visual. Last but not least, our fourth uh, lobes that we haven't mentioned just now, okay, which is very clear and easy to see, okay, this is the temporal lobe, okay, and it's divided by a lateral sulcus here. So this temporal lobe consists of a number of uh, areas where it responds to auditory, okay, hearing, uh, and also some comprehension of speech, ability to understand speech and form speech yourself, as well as learning and memory. That's the four main um, lobes of the brain uh, that you need to understand and know the function okay, uh, in general. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you at Nimat. Bye-bye.